Okay, there we go. Good morning, and uh, thank you for having me. Thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, I believe I only heard good words, but I will check my dictionary later. I will know for sure. Uh, my name is James Kretschmar, and I am from Akamai Technologies, where I am Director of Technology for Europe, Middle East, and Africa. And uh, I'll start by explaining a little bit about who Akamai is and what we do, uh, which will help you understand what our perspective is on the internet, because we, we do get a unique view into a lot of what's going on on the internet today, and then we can predict trends into the future. So, Akamai has a really large platform. Uh, we have many, many servers all around the world. In fact, we have uh, 132,000 servers deployed, uh, through which a lot of internet traffic passes. Uh, and these are located in 86 different countries around the world. So it's a massive deployment. And when we're in a country, we try to be not only in one place in the country, but in many, many places, many cities, uh, many networks, as close to the end user as possible. We deliver about two trillion transactions on the internet every day. So this can be visiting a web page, this can be watching a video online, downloading music, interacting with an online application, but two trillion every day. And we believe that this represents approximately 30% of all of the traffic on the web and coming from all around the world. So we really do get to see a lot of what's, what happens on the internet. Uh, one other way to explore what view of the internet we have uh, is by looking at who our customers are. Now, we can't give them all by name, but we have, for example, uh, all 20 of the top global e-commerce sites around the world. We have 96 of the top 100 retailers in the United States, uh, 30 of the top media and entertainment companies, seven of the top 10 banks around the world, nine of the top 10 largest newspapers, nine of top 10 social media sites, all of the top antivirus companies, and in the end, one out of three uh, of all of the global 500 companies as listed by, by Fortune. So uh, this is saying that we both have a network that is distributed around the world, that's serving a lot of traffic, but also for many, many top sites. And this is how we see a lot of the, the internet population. And we estimate that we're seeing somewhere over a billion unique internet users on our on our platform, okay? So using that, this will be our basis for saying, what do we see as trends on the internet and where is it going? So because we have a short time, we'll explore just three major pieces of data from the many, many pieces that we collect. Uh, we'll look at internet and broadband adoption in general. How are people coming to the internet? Uh, we will look at the trends in mobile devices. And finally, we will look at trends in security, which is becoming as you see in the newspapers, more and more of an issue every day. Okay, so first, internet adoption. So these numbers we're looking at here uh, are to do with the number of IPv4 addresses we see connecting to our platform. Now, this is just one way to look at adoption of the internet. Uh, it's not perfect because there's proxies and other technologies that make it not correspond exactly to end users, but it's a good start. It's a good place to start. Uh, and we can see here that globally, uh, we're now at about 700 million unique IPv4 addresses. And importantly, globally, it's a 10% increase over the year before, right? So more and more people are still coming to the internet that didn't have it before. And in some places, you can see China is highlighted here. Uh, this is 100 million IPv4 addresses, but that's out of a population of over a billion people, right? And the growth here is 20%. So this is a strong growth. And even in the face of IPv4 address, uh, address exhaustion, uh, many, many new people are coming on to the internet that weren't before. Brazil is another good example where we see 33% growth. These are both countries that have large populations, but also large parts that weren't on the internet before and are now coming onto the internet. Other countries, for example, South Korea, which is already uh, very highly connected, we see slower growth because it's, it's fairly saturated. Okay, so that's an idea for how many people are coming onto the internet in terms of growth. But let's look at how they're connecting to the internet, in particular, the speed of their connections. Um, what we're measuring here is the average peak connection speed broken down by country. Um, the peak part is to sort of weed out problems that would be uh, in the numbers based on TCP slow start and, and other factors like that. So what we're really looking at is 
how fast are the pipes? How fast are the connections? How good is the ability to get onto the internet over time? So globally, we can see that the peak connection speeds are going up. The global average here is 16.6 .6 megabits per second. And when we think about that as being an average, that's very impressive, right? Because there's many countries with low connection speeds that pull that number down as an average. So to have 16 as the average means we're, we're getting good. Uh, it's 35% up year over year. So we are seeing a, a large increase in the speed in which people can connect to the internet. Uh, and in particular, if we look at the year over year change here, now these countries listed, these are already countries that uh, are at the top of the list in terms of connection speed. Um, it's not highlighted, but that first column there, you see 57 megabits per second, 49 megabits per second. So these are highly connected countries. But at the same time, the year over year growth in connection speed is still double digits. You see 44%, 33%, 41%. Um, so the countries where there's slow connection speeds, they're getting faster, and the countries where there's fast connection speeds, they're getting faster as well. Okay, we can look at that over a five-year trend, and this is broken down by continent. Uh, you can see on every continent over five years, the average connection speeds are going up. People are able to get to the internet faster and faster. Um, a couple of things that stand out here, uh, South America in particular, you can see, uh, is coming from a, a small amount and is growing. It doesn't look high on the chart, but it represents uh, a large amount of growth. Okay, so one other way to look at connection speeds. We know that speeds are getting faster, but let's look at it from a point of broadband. In particular, we'll say, we'll consider broadband access to the internet to be four megabits per second or faster. This is a really good, decent connection to the internet. Who has that? So this is percentage of the population by country that have broadband access to the internet. The global number now is about 42%. 42%, which is impressive. And it's up 15% year over year. Um, but these numbers are, are even more impressive. You see, in, in some of these countries, uh, the penetration of broadband is well over 70%. Uh, they have a large, large part of the population that is able to be connected at high speed uh, and interact with the web and the internet in a, in a substantial way. And this is the five-year trend. Uh, this also is showing almost across the board that there's growth in broadband adoption. Uh, with the exception that Asia is kind of flat, and that's to do with the fact that uh, some of the countries uh, both have very large populations that are, are bringing the average down. But uh, another particular standout here you can see at the bottom is South America, which comes from almost zero to now having 10% uh, of the, the population uh, with broadband access. And that, that doesn't just happen by accident. That's a major effort. That is uh, governments making a point of deploying this or uh, companies making a point of it. It's a major investment, but it's really changed. Okay, so everything I've talked about so far is saying we're getting more people on the internet, connections are getting faster, people have more broadband access to the internet, uh, which is good to know and it's very important, um, but it's also what we've seen going on the whole way. The internet is growing and it continues to grow. Uh, and it looks like it's going to continue to grow at a, at a very fast pace. But now let's turn to things that are kind of new and changing and dramatic. And one you've heard already today is mobile because the world is changing in terms of mobile. Uh, this graph makes it very, very clear right away. This is showing the breakdown in uh, bandwidth usage on mobile networks for voice and for data. Voice is in orange and data is in blue. Voice is growing, but you can have to look very hard to see it. Uh, it is growing, but it's slow. But data is exploding, right? Um, we're seeing just even from a quarter to a quarter a, a doubling of growth. So people are doing more and more from their mobile devices. They're demanding more and more from their mobile devices. And uh, this is mobile devices on mobile networks. And mobile networks have special challenges because they are not as fast as a fixed network. Now we have data as well that will show how mobile network speeds are increasing. Mobile networks are getting faster, um, but they're still far, far behind a, a fixed network, a desktop network. So this means that people are gonna have expectations about how they're able to interact with the internet based on mobile more and more. Another graph that will show this one is looking at the breakdown of percentage of users visiting a site from a mobile device versus a desktop device. And this is just global across the board, right? So 
This is saying not only are people doing more and more from their phones, but they're actually, the phone users or the mobile device users are displacing the desktop users. In some cases, this is because the user uh, may choose to use a mobile device instead of their desktop device because they're more sophisticated now. We have more tablets than we used to. Uh, in other cases, this may be users whose primary uh, ability to access the internet is through a mobile device and they don't have a desktop or a, or a fixed device. But either way, this means that for a growing percentage of the population, uh, their primary interaction with the internet is through a mobile device and on a mobile network. Uh, and that's a challenge and that needs to be addressed. So mobile is huge, mobile is taking off. We've all seen this. Uh, the other major shift in trend that we've seen is in security, particularly in 2012. Now this has been in so many newspapers that uh, it almost goes without saying, but we can look at some of the data that we see on the Akamai platform. So distributed denial of service attacks are one of the major security threats that is a, is a daily problem. Uh, some of our customers come to us particularly to uh, defend against distributed denial of service attacks. Now, in the past year, we saw a three times, a threefold increase in the number of denial of service attacks against our customers on the Akamai platform. In 2011, it was about 250 attacks. In 2012, 768. So this is a dramatic increase. And a word about these numbers, the attacks that we're talking about here uh, are not attacks that, well, these are attacks that require a human to intervene. The way that our platform works, there's a lot of attacks that go on that we don't see at all. Uh, we just deflect them without having to interact or to take care of them or even have visibility into them. So for example, SIN floods, um, UDP attack floods, uh, they hit the edge of our platform and they go away and, and we don't even see them or notice them. These are just the attacks that require some specialized technology like a web application firewall to block the traffic. So this is, this is getting bad. Um, some reasons behind it. One, the attacks are getting easier to initiate. Uh, it's very straightforward now to go to a website and download a tool and make your machine part of a larger uh, attack network. Now, the, that's not good, <laughs> but the, the only little piece of good news that comes out of it is that those attacks tend to be the ones that we know how to defend against more easily um, because it's, uh, it's known how they work and they're usually volumetric based attacks, just send a lot of traffic. Um, you need some sophistication to defend against it, but we know more or less how to do it. The bad news is that uh, at the same time, attackers are developing new techniques and they are figuring out how to make their attacks both more efficient and more clever to try and avoid detection and to avoid, well not detection if it's a denial of service, they want it detected, um, but they want to uh, avoid letting us prevent their attack from happening. Um, and this we saw uh, specifically with the Ababal attacks, which I'll talk about in, in more depth, um, where the, uh, the attackers are figuring out more sophisticated methods for, for denial of service. But first, I'll break down a little bit the attacks by, by sector. So these are different classifications of customers on our platform and the attacks that they've experienced in 2012. Uh, the first thing you notice is that all of the sectors are being attacked. This is not just one group. This is not just government sites. This is not just high tech. Uh, it's everyone. Uh, actually, I'm surprised that public sector isn't larger, uh, larger than it is um, because it, it tends to get a lot of attention when a, when a, a government website is attacked. But, uh, but they're all on this chart. And commerce, you can see, which takes up a big chunk, there's 269 attacks in the commerce sector, which was more attacks than we saw in all of 2011, right? So the growth here is, is big. But if we look at individual sectors, for example, commerce, um, then we see big trends in who's getting attacked. Uh, retail in particular within commerce is a major target for attack. Um, there's many reasons for this. One is that uh, the retailers in particular are very sensitive to denial of service from a financial point of view. Uh, these large retailers, they measure the amount of money that they make in dollars per minute online. And every minute that their site is down, they know how many dollars they're losing. And then if it's five minutes, 10 minutes, an hour, a day, that number gets very, very big in terms of uh, financial loss. So that's one reason for attacks against retailers. Uh, the other is that you know, we, we know that there's cases here where extortion goes on, where the attackers first demand uh, of a retailer that they pay them some amount of money. And if they don't, then they attack their site. 
and maybe they attack for a while and then stop and say, okay, now pay up or we'll turn it back on again. So it's, uh, it's not a nice world, but this is what's going on. Um, if we look at the enterprise sector, there's also a major trend, which is that it's largely the financial services that are being attacked, uh, and this is banks. And this is in large part due to the Ababa attacks in, uh, in 2012. So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, uh, this was uh, a range of denial of service attacks uh, that were targeted at U.S. banks primarily. Um, although there are constantly banks being added to the list uh, of ones that are under attack, including European banks. Um, there were two phases. It started in September 2012, and then there was a second phase that took place in December and uh, lasted until January 2013. Now, these attacks were starting to get more sophisticated. Um, there were a variety of different techniques used to try and bring down websites. Uh, they used volumetric DNS denial of service, volumetric attacks at layer three and four, trying to you know, do IP-based flooding, uh, and then also higher layer volumetric attacks. So lots of HTTP gets uh, flooding the site. And they also did something fairly clever, which is taking advantage of SSL resource uh, limitations, which is to say, to connect over SSL, over a secure socket, requires more resources, and so they tried to take advantage of that. Uh, but what was really clever here was that we saw there were high volume bursts of traffic, uh, up to say 10,000 requests per minute on a robot node. This is one of the major uh, denial of service platforms that's out there. Um, they would burst for a short period of time, and then they would go dormant for maybe a long time, hours or days. Individual machines would do this but they would rotate. So you would have a, a big burst of connections from one machine, and then it would go dormant, and then a big burst from another, and then another, and another. And the reason is, it's very hard to block that if you don't have a sophisticated um, defense system. You'll see an attack coming in from an IP address, you can block that IP address, but then the next minute, it's a whole new IP address that's attacking you, and then a new one, and then a new one, and then a new one. Now, if you have a, a sophisticated defense system like Akamai can help provide, that's not too much of a problem, but uh, it's, not easy otherwise. Uh, up to 18 million requests per second aggregate we saw during that attack. And the other thing is uh, they did things like uh, varied the URL parameters, the user agents, the uh, anything that they could so that you couldn't uh, try to identify the traffic so that we could filter it. But it can be done. So one other uh, little piece of information on the security aspect, um, Akamai also runs a, a network of agents distributed around the world that aren't advertised actually as part of any service. Uh, these are not part of our platform on which we're trying to serve end user requests. They sit there just listening for attackers that are probing our network. Um, and this is a breakdown of the traffic we see of malicious attackers just looking for weaknesses in different machines on the internet. Um, you can see Windows file sharing port, there's a lot of attempts there. Uh, Telnet still has many, which was a surprise to me. But this is, uh, this is the hostile world of the internet we live in today. So, a quick conclusion. Key findings. Uh, there's continued strong growth in internet adoption and broadband adoption. So, more people are getting online, they're able to be online at faster speeds. Right? And this has been a trend for a long time, and it's continuing to grow quickly and strongly. Two, increasing use of mobile devices. This is taking off. Um, more and more of the world is accessing the internet primarily through a mobile device and on a mobile network. And then three, uh, a dramatic increase in denial of service attacks. The security landscape of the internet is becoming more hostile, and it's, it's becoming more difficult to um, protect sites from denial of service. One last piece of information for further information. Uh, Akamai actually does produce a report called State of the Internet. Uh, we do it every quarter, uh, and it's available online for free. You can download it from this URL on www.akamai.com. So I encourage you to, to visit it, and you can look at all of the statistics in detail and follow them throughout the year uh, as we do. Thank you. <laughs>